today I want us to read the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creature altogether, a new creation. The old previous moral, somebody say moral, moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony. Somebody shout and say harmony. harmony. Shout it out again and say harmony. harmony. And God gave to us the what? The ministry of reconciliation. That by word and by deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. Hallelujah. That by word and by deed, we don't tell people how condemned they are. We don't tell people, wewe mungu wakikushika wewe, utaona, utakuwa kielelezo. No, we don't tell people that. We tell them, we give them the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation is the message according to the understanding of Paul that God has given us to tell people that God has already opened the door. God is not folding a fist, you know, waiting to, to, to touch, to get people and, 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 and banish them and cast them and destroy them. That God is no longer harboring wrath and rage. No. That is the message that we reconcile people. In fact, let me continue this. He says, it was God, personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up hmm, and holding against men their trespasses, but, but doing what? But doing what? If it is canceled, is it still there? Okay. Thank you for the two voices. If it is cancelled, is it still there? No. It is not there. It has been taken away. Praise God. So that's very important for you as a believer to understand. And committing to us the message of reconciliation. The Bible says verse 20 finally. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it was, as it was through us. We, as Christ's personal representatives, beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. So the question is, if you are already reconciled to God, have you laid hold of that divine favor? Have you gotten it? Yes. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Okay, Luke chapter 11 verse 2, the Bible says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. The will of God has already been fulfilled in heaven. So Jesus taught us to pray and said when we pray, is so that what has happened in heaven might become fulfilled also on the earth. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. It never returns to you void. And today, oh God, I will minister by the gift of the grace of God that has been given to me by the effective working of your power. Thank you because the sick will be healed today. Thank you because minds will be renewed. Thank you because faith, the spirit of faith is here. To believe for whatever was called impossible. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for all this, O oh God. That even as your word comes forth, they will prosper in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God. We pray, O oh God, and we minister to this end that Christ may be formed in your people and that your people will know you clearly in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, friends, the last week, as I've already said, I talked about peace with God. And I talked about uh, uh, the fact that God had to be revealed. And you can never say that you know God unless you know the grace of God and the mercy of God. 
And one of the things that show us the heart and the grace of God is the aspect of reconciliation. There is no revelation of God that is complete without us knowing what it is that God has done for the sinner. That God he himself in his son Jesus Christ because Jesus is the father in bodily form. Jesus in God is God in the body. The word became flesh. The word was God. And therefore, for us to understand God and to understand what it means to be saved and what it is to walk free, we need to understand reconciliation. For us to live a life of faith and confidence in God, knowing that the one that is in us will never leave us, knowing that the Holy Spirit is not in us for a season, he is not in us for a short time, that he will dwell with us forever, it is important for us to understand the basis of that in dwelling that he did not come to dwell in us in our former nature he did not come to dwell in us while we were still enemies with God or with, with him, with his spirit. He did not come to dwell with him in us while we were still hostile to God. He did not come to dwell in us while we were alienated and separated from him. But something happened so that he can come and comfortably dwell within us without killing us. In the Old Testament, they couldn't even get near him. In the New Testament, he is not only near, but he is inside. What happened to you? That you are carrying what used to kill people in the, New, in the Old Testament. Now you are carrying, you are calling him your friend. What happened? Something must have happened. Praise the name of the living God. And I said here uh, uh, last week, I said a few things that are very, very important. We saw very, very importantly that reconciliation is based on God's righteousness. That God, by reconciling you, he doesn't reconcile you by ignoring sin, by condoning sin. But he reconciles you because he has already punished every sin. Every sin received a just retribution. Every sin was justly taken care of. How? He took your sin and he put it upon Christ. Every sin that people had committed were put on Jesus. And the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin. So that me and you can become the righteousness of God. Praise the name of the living God. Therefore every sin has been paid for. And this is the core. This is the center of Christianity. Amen. You can't be saved, you know, as a believer until you, are, you believe that my sins have been taken. Hallelujah. My sins have been taken. My, my sins have been discharged, you know, through the death. Of Jesus Christ on that cross through the shedding forth of his blood. My sins have fully been remitted. And that's very, very important. When you see some advertisements, I will not mention the detergent. But when you see it advertised, they say that it gets rid of all the spots, the grease, the grass, the, and, the, and the mud in one wash. If a detergent can do that, why is it that it's difficult to believe that Jesus' blood can take care of the grandmother's sins, grandfather's sins, and my own sins all in one wash? Why is it that it's difficult so that we have to keep on bringing it up? It's because people have never fully understood the finality of the cross. The finality of the sacrifice of Christ. That the sacrifice of Christ was fully able to save anybody from whatever background. The Bible says if your sins are as red as scarlet... Come, and I will make them as white as snow. That is the promise he gives in the, in the Old Testament. When he comes in the New Testament, Paul caught it, and he understood that the blood of Jesus, when it washes us, it doesn't leave a blemish. It doesn't leave a mark. It doesn't leave a spot. It doesn't leave a stain. Don't we sing the song? Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. 
No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. The finality of it. That the blood, the sacrifice of the son of God himself is enough for whatever it is that any human person ever committed. Are we together? It is enough. The sacrifice once and for all. He died for the sins of all. Somebody shout and say once and for all. It is important for you and that's why I'm staying there. For you to believe. Because there are people who think that you came from that washing with the, blood, with the sins of your, of your generations behind you. That you came from the washing of the blood of Jesus still carrying the sins that you used to have before you got born again. And therefore, if the sins that you committed before you born, you got born again still exist, then the blood is not powerful enough. But the blood washes every sin. Hallelujah. Now you need to understand because of that blood, the wrath of God was appeased. It's called propitiation. It's called the peace offering. The sacrifice that calms things down, that calms tempers down, that eradicates hostility. When Jesus died and said it is finished, the anger of God ended. And I've told you that people will go to hell not because they sinned, but because they rejected the washing of the blood. Because they rejected the Savior. The sin of the world is that they have not believed in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, the solution for every sin has already been provided. And that is Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the living God. We saw also... That reconciliation is God's initiative. God took the initiative. Not because he was the one who had wronged us. He was always on the right. We were the ones that had wronged him. But I also told you that the person who seeks reconciliation is the person who understands the, st the stakes. Who understands what you stand to lose if this relationship breaks. And we together. The pastor, the person who understands the benefits of a relationship will be the first one to make peace. The person who understands what will be lost when this relationship breaks will be the one to make peace. So God did not wait for us to know that we are wrong. He did not want wait for us to come to ourselves. He made the first step. He took the first in initiative. Yes. Because he understood. If I allow these guys to go the way they are going. They will come short of my glory. They, at the end of the tunnel. They will find hellfire. They will go into eternal separation from me. They will, be, uh, they will never receive my inheritance. They will never receive my nature. They will never walk in my grace. They will never walk in my favor. I know that I am not, I'm, I'm the one who is on the right. And I know they are wrong. But I'm going to reach out to them. So that I bring them back to the benefit of a relationship. Are we together? So it was God who took the first initiative. It was God who paid the means of reconciliation. He said, yes, you guys, I know you did me wrong, but I will pay the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can know, you know me, maybe you have a friend and that friend did something against you and you know he was your friend and he messed you bad, but you tell him, my friend, I remember the days we were friends and I want us to be friends again. Don't worry about the dinner. I'm going to pay for the dinner. Don't worry about the Uber. I'm going to pay for the Uber. Don't worry about the cost of the reconciliation I'm going to take care of it myself and that is what Jesus did and that is what God did in Christ that God was in Christ reconciling paying the price that it would take for me and him to have peace yeah. now it's up to you as a believer to ask yourself 
whether the price was enough. Was it enough? Yes. Then if it was enough, walk in peace. Live in peace. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, that is very important for us to understand. Somebody shout and say reconciliation is peace. Now, it's very, very important for us to know that the word reconciliation is a prayer, is a continuous tense, meaning that we remain in that state of reconciliation. There is another word in the Bible that is like reconciliation, which is the word, it is finished. The word, it is finished, although it happened 2,000 years ago, it means that everything remains in the state of being finished. That just because we are 2,000 years after Jesus died, we cannot say it was finished because it was not past tense. It's not past tense. We can't say it was finished. We say it is finished because even now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, it remains in the state of being finished. Reconciliation is vital to understanding what happened at the cross. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Reconciliation means that there is a change and an exchange. Praise God. The change means that our status has now changed. We are no longer slaves of sin. We are no longer the condemned. We are no longer the accused. But we are the righteousness of God. Praise the name of the Lord. He who knew no sin, he became sin. So that me and you who had committed sin might become his righteousness. Therefore, we see a change in status. It's very, very important. Therefore, there is also an exchange. An exchange of the sentence. That Jesus took our sentence. Jesus died on our behalf. It is called substitution. He took it on, our, on, on himself on our behalf, so that we do not have to take it. Praise the name of the Lord. Reconciliation is not a work in progress. It is not happening. It has already happened. It is finished. When he said it is finished, yeah, it means even reconciliation was finished. It is a completed work, fully paid for, fully settled. Praise the name of the Lord. That's very, very important. The other thing that we need to understand is that when you receive reconciliation, when you have taken hold and accepted the message of reconciliation, then what happens is that you are justified. That is a legal term. It means you are declared innocent, not guilty. You are acquitted. Just as if you never sinned. Now you need to understand, when God declares you justified, that is when you are regenerated. God does not make you a new person while carrying your sin. Amen. The new person that comes out, the new creation, is totally without sin. And that is the creature of the creation that is holy and fully justified. That hell and heaven doesn't have anything against you. God does not impute sin to this justified person. And hell cannot bring charge. That is why Paul saying, who can bring charge? Who can accuse are we together? So hell doesn't have anything to accuse you. So the only way a hell has a playground is in the mind of believers. That is why you need a renewal of the mind. Now you need to know justification, forgiveness, and redemption do not involve a change in the person. I need, to understand, I need you to understand this. Justification, forgiveness, redemption does not change your nature. You can forgive somebody today and they will still do it tomorrow. And they still remain the same person. 
you can declare somebody not guilty. And we have seen it in this nation where people were acquitted. They were released and they were told you have no case to answer. But they continued in their former habit because that release did not change who they were. We need to understand that forgiveness, justification, redemption actually means to buy you back. To buy you back, to break you from the place of bondage. To pay a ransom for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's important for you to understand that these are legal. That means that when he has bought you, in whatever state you are, you belong now to him. Legally, you belong to God. The devil doesn't have a claim over your life. You belong to God. Somebody say, I belong to you. Belong. Shout it out and say, I belong to Jesus. Belong to Jesus. So that is important now. Forgiveness and justification means that there is a legal standpoint. It is legal. Yani legally, God has cleared you. Nobody can point a finger at you. But it has not changed your nature. It is regeneration that changes you. Praise God. Justification means that God declares and makes us righteous. Righteousness is imputed and accounted in us. Amen. God's reconciling act was finished once and for all. Before the message of it reaches the sinner, God had already reconciled. This is what I mean. By the time the prodigal son came home, the heart of the father was already settled. Amen. So God is not going to reconcile somebody when they get born again now. His heart is already reconciled. God has already reconciled and opened the door wide and said, come. Amen. The father of the prodigal son's heart, as I've said, had already changed. Now, the ministry and the word of reconciliation is therefore the, the message of a concluded and a, an accomplished act. It has already been done. Amen. And, and there's an example I want to borrow about a guy called George Wilson. Now, George Wilson, he, he went and hijacked the mail services in the U.S. He hijacked the mail services, the, the postal services of U U.S. He hijacked them and he actually killed one person. He killed a person. He was a murderer. He, took, he was taken to court and he was found guilty. The evidence pointed to him that he was guilty. Praise the name of the Lord. Some people... You know, representation, advocates, and people were able to push his case forward to the governor of the state. And finally, it got to the president. When it got to the president, actually he was pardoned. He was given a, a presidential pardon, meaning although he was supposed to be executed, although he was supposed to die by lethal injection, the presidential pardon means that he had been forgiven, absorbed, from all wrongdoing and that he was now free to walk. He was free. Amen. So this is what happened when they brought the pardon, the president, the letter signed by the president and, and, and of course the correctional authorities. He was told that you've been pardoned. You don't have to die. Actually, you don't even need to live in prison anymore. You are free to go. The guy refused to take the pardon. The point is this, they had to go to the Supreme Court of the U United States because now they, they are dealing with two cases here. The president has spoken as the leader of the nation. Yeah? The authority of the nation has spoken and written a letter and has said this person has been pardoned and it is recognizable by law. Amen, lawyers? It is recognizable by law. There is that situation where this prisoner has been released. But there is this situation where the prisoner himself is refusing to receive the pardon. Although he can read it and he can see the seal and he can see from the desk of the president. He sees it's a legal document and he was told, by the way, all you need to do is accept it. You don't even need to co-sign you just need to say, oh, thank you so much. And, and you change from your uniform into civilian clothing. 
But the guy refused. So when they went to Supreme Court, they said that even the president, although he has sealed a letter, although he has signed a letter to say he's free, even him, he couldn't force him to accept the pardon. Are you getting me? And that is how our reconciliation is. That God had already fulfilled everything. Yet, even God cannot force anybody to receive the reconciliation. Go ahead and clap. And that is where our message comes in. He says that we preach to the people and we tell them, be reconciled to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you need to understand something as I go to my text. It is important for us to understand that the will of God has already been fulfilled in heaven. Do you believe that? Now you need to know that everything and everyone in heaven is fully compliant with the will of God. The devil tried otherwise and he was kicked out. Amen. The will of God, the perfect will of God is what happens and reigns in heaven. There is nothing in heaven that happens that is inconsistent with God. Everything is in line with Jesus. Before we go to heaven also, we must be like him. That is why we are predestined to bear the image of his son. You need to understand, friends, that in heaven, God is the absolute authority. There is nothing in heaven that challenges the authority of God. And here on earth, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, that I have all authority. By his death and by the price he paid. Yeah, This is after the re resurrection. After he, he was resurrected and he was given the great commission to his disciples, he said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Praise God. And therefore in heaven, God has absolute ownership of everything and everybody. There is no one who will ever enter heaven that doesn't belong to him. In heaven, there is no lost and found. At the Aka department that takes care of where we happy. No. In heaven, <laughs> everything belongs to him. Total and complete ownership. And that is why I'm taking you to the place where Jesus said, as it is in heaven, so on earth. And therefore, through his death, he brought what? Total authority on the earth. Ownership of you and me. He owns us. So that for the heaven to come and be extended to the earth, he has to own. You can't go building a house on a land that doesn't belong to you. It has to first belong to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody shout and say, I belong to him. Belong. Now the other thing is, as I close, heaven is a place of complete, total and complete liberty. There is no enslavement, confinement, or bondage in heaven. Somebody say freedom. freedom. Yeah. The Bible says he who the Son sets free here on earth is free indeed. He is taking the freedom and the liberty of heaven and he's bringing it to us. And he's made us free. Praise the name of the Lord. In heaven there is no sickness or death in heaven. Resurrection does not mean... Yeah, a man being raised from the dead. It means being in a state where death cannot exist or have power. That is what resurrection means. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, nobody can take away my life from me. I lay it willingly. And then when the three days are over, I will pick it up again. I mean, that's mysterious. How can he lay down his life and then pick it up again as if he's, he's a coat? But he is God. Praise the name of the living God. Meaning I am the resurrection. Even death could not touch Jesus until he wanted to die. Hallelujah. He said like a sheep to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth. He was looking forward to that death. Because for the joy that was placed before him, he endured the cross. Hallelujah. You need to understand that Christ's idea of the kingdom of God 
is a full alignment and compliance of the earth to heaven. As it is in heaven, so on earth. His mind, when he was teaching his disciples to pray, he was saying, pray that whatever has been done in heaven might be done on the earth. In heaven, everything is spiritually perfect and in form. So, when we are talking about reconciliation, it's not just a bringing us into a peaceful relationship without fighting or without enmity. It also means that we are brought into harmony with heaven. We are brought into harmony with God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. That we are brought into a place where we are compatible. Somebody shout and say, I am compatible. What does the word compatible mean? The word compatible, it means that it's capable of existing and working together in harmony. That me and you to live that heavenly life. We have been transferred into the kingdom of his dear son. In that kingdom, we don't live in constant conflict with God. In that kingdom, we do not live in hostility with God. But we are compatible with God. And that is why our nature had to be changed. Praise the name of the Lord. He made peace. He forgave us. He declared us justified. And that was good enough. Amen. But he went beyond that. And he gave birth to us through his own word. And gave us his own nature. Why? Because with his own nature, we become compatible with him. Praise the name of the living God. Come here, Collins, with the gadgets. Come here, come here and, and, and thumb. Remove them. Come, come quickly. Now, I have several gadgets here. Several gadgets. They are, they are phones and, and they, are, they are various chargers. Bring this. Take this phone. Now, you see this charger. What, what charger is this? Okay, don't worry. You see how the charger is? Come here, Collins. I want you to take that phone. I want you to insert this charger into the pin. Can it go in? He is saying it is not compatible. He is saying it cannot connect. He is saying it cannot work together. He is saying it doesn't agree. So what is using one word? It is not compatible. Praise the name of the Lord. So what God did there is this nature that was not compatible to me, to him. He couldn't agree with heaven. The carnal mind cannot receive the things of God. They are foolishness. The, the natural mind is hostile and at enmity with the things of God. So what he did after forgiving and after justifying and after declaring righteous, the nature is changed. Praise the name of the living God. So that is the old nature that dies with Christ on the cross. And there is now the new nature. This new nature, can you try and connect? Amen. Now this new nature has connected. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? It is compatible. It can work together without conflict. It can work together without destroying the phone. It can work together without disconnecting and they will keep on connecting. You understand what I mean? It can work together without breaking down my gadget. Why? It because it is reconciled. The owner, that, the person that manufactured the phone also manufactured a charger that is able to connect with it. And that is why you need to understand that as a child of God, the nature of reconciliation means the state of reconciliation means that you are in a state where you are in harmony and compatible with the spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Sit down. Where is my bottle? Come here. Today I have some examples. Something will have to stick. If the phone doesn't stick, something else will stick. Amen. Yeah. Now, here is a bottle cup. Now this, this thing, if you try to cover it, it refuses. Because they are not, they are not what? They are not compatible. They are not in harmony. They cannot agree. They cannot connect. 
for you to operate in the kingdom of God. To operate the life of God in you. For you to be able to carry power. The Bible says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. There's got to be something within you that agrees with that power. And that something is the nature of God himself. Praise the name of the living God. Somebody shout and say, I am reconciled. The Bible says we are given a ministry to bring people from the other nature. We preach the gospel. They are transferred into the kingdom of his son. They are changed until they connect with heaven themselves. And whatever it is that is in heaven is freely flowing into their life. That is reconciliation. Anything that belongs to God, even revelation, it had to be given a little at a time. We wait a few hundred years, then we are given a little one. But when Jesus came, he came and revealed himself completely and totally. Praise the name of the living God. In fact, he told his disciples, I cannot tell you all things now because you cannot bear it. Your nature can't bear it. You will crack. You will fall apart. When I start to tell you, you he is the body, and I, I mean you are the body and he's the head, you will break apart. Your mind, your oblongata is not wired. It can understand calculus. It can understand biology, but it cannot understand how it is that you became a new creature before dying. Are you hearing me? So he said, I have a lot of things to tell you, but I cannot tell you now because you cannot bear them. You cannot carry them. You cannot withstand them. You, can, you are not able to handle them. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into everything. He will not hide anything. He will tell you how you can walk in miracles. He will not only tell you about miracles, but he will empower you to perform those miracles. Praise the name of the living God. Why? because you are now compatible with the life of God. You are compatible with grace. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, how many are you? Do you love God? Thank you. All things work together for good. For those who are called in line, in harmony, in tune, According, that word according, meaning God has a purpose and he's calling people not according to the purpose of the people themselves, but according to the purpose that he predestined. Therefore, when he changes you, brings you into reconciliation, brings you into compatibility, brings you into harmony, it is because there is a purpose. And that purpose is that God may live his life and manifest himself in you that you become the expression of his nature. Therefore, he changed you. The old nature he changed so that when you, you are called and you agreed to that calling, I was reading a particular version, the Living Bible, it says this, for those he predestined, those he foreknew he predestined, that they may be conformed to the image of his dear son. The Bible says those he predestined, he called. Now, there's a doctrine out there that is called, it's a, it's a theological school of thought that says that scripture proves that there is what is called selective salvation. That there are people that were not predestined to get saved. And those God doesn't call. And I read this version, the living Bible, it says, those he predestined, he foreknew he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And those that he predestined, he called. And it says, and those who responded to his call, he justified. Are you seeing the difference? Not God was not selective. He has put the gospel for everybody. He is calling everybody through the gospel. Be reconciled to God. And the Bible says that, the living Bible, he says, and those who responded to his call, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. Are you seeing the floor of it? So it's very important here. It's according to his purpose. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9. 
having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Meaning in himself he has a purpose. In himself there is something that would please him. And when he starts to make us know the mystery of his will, the knowledge of that mystery is in line with the purpose. It is reconciled with that purpose. Therefore, the greatest life you can ever live as a Christian is a life that is in line with what is in the heart of God for you. Are we together? In line. You live a life that is according to that purpose. He had already purposed. Praise the name of the living God. The good pleasure of his will. Finally, 2 Timothy 1.9 Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Are you seeing? So everything that God is doing is in line with what is called his purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. And me and you have been brought into harmony. We've been brought, we've been reconciled. To be able to handle that purpose. To be able to carry that purpose. To be able to accomplish that purpose on the earth without conflicting with God. Without breaking down. Praise the name of the Lord. You carry fire. He makes his ministers flames of fire. Yet that fire doesn't burn you. Why? Because you have been reconciled. Stand up on your feet. 